learn how to create, sustain, and scale up your print-on-demand business with the latest tips, guides, and strategies to help you start selling and making money today. Welcome to the Sales on Demand Show, and here's your host, Adam Schneider. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Adam, here. And if my voice sounds a tiny bit different, you should probably know that I am on the road. I'm away from home. I'm on a conference. And that is why this episode is going to be coming out a little bit late. It is currently Monday. And I haven't seen my house for three days now. This is my second conference in a row. I had something completely different. Uh, And then there was a giant snowstorm, and then I drove 400 kilometers to a different conference. So, yay, fun times. And uh, I'm currently sitting in my work truck, actually, ready to go to get a haircut. Hair's getting long. And I wanted to share some thoughts with you guys, because I'm nothing if not consistent. And it's part of my goal to be disciplined and consistent creating new content plus I just I love podcasting I love it so much it's just part of kind of who I am so I wanted to share um, a way for you guys something that I learned and may, maybe you've heard this before but I heard it for the first time this weekend and I thought that's freaking brilliant and I had to share it I just as soon as I learned it I, I had to share it So one of the things that I was doing this past weekend is I was prepping for a summer camp that I am going to be speaking at. Um, My son is going to camp for the very first time. It's a Bible camp, but uh, it's, uh, it's his first time basically going away from home for any length of time. And I'm the speaker, so I'm very much in charge of kind of how the camp goes and the timing and everything like that Uh, and I'm collaborating with another young lady and we're putting together the plan for it and uh, probably a lot of the the ideas are going to come from me since I've done stuff like this before but it's great to be able to coach somebody and teach them how to how to do these kinds of things and help them build their own leadership abilities so long story short if you haven't done something before or you're not very good at it, you need a mentor. And uh, I've actually had a couple of requests over the last year and people want to be mentored or they want coaching and they want, you know, they're looking for someone to help guide them through some aspect of, of what I'm doing here. So unfortunately at the moment, I am completely maxed out on time. I do not have spare time for coaching as much as I would love to. And I'm not saying that sarcastically. I would love to coach. It's something that I do plan to do. Absolutely, I do plan to do it. And I think I'd be good at it. And I think I would enjoy it a lot. And it's just uh, sometimes you just have to say, I can't. I don't have time for that. It doesn't mesh with what I'm doing. Actually, it does mesh with what I'm doing. It's just that I, I don't have time for it and I I have to say no for the time being and that's just a part of discipline guys Um, you you have to learn how to filter out the useful activities from the useless activities and that's something that I'm learning how to do and sometimes the process isn't as neat and tidy as I'd like it to be like sometimes I say yes to things and regret it later because I realize oh I just committed to a whole bunch more work Um, But right now, at the very moment I'm speaking to you, I don't have anything on my plate that I'm regretting agreeing to. Everything that I'm doing right now is something that I intentionally got into and that I want to do because I believe it will enhance my future, teach me something, keep me fit, or etc. So, a funny story here. One of the things that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get back into the Army Reserves and I went for the fitness test and it's a it's an easy fitness test. I mean, it's just basically proving that you're not completely 
you know, unfit to be in the military. And then when you get in, they'll train you and push you and, and break you down a bit more and then remold you into a great warrior or at least a reasonably good soldier. And so I went in to run this fitness test. It's just like a series of little exercises that you do, lifting a sandbag, just just some really easy things to do. And I've, I've been training for it. And basically when I'm training for it, I just run the test over and over again until I don't want to do it anymore. And then I know I'm ready for it. So I, I was pumped and ready to go. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to crush this. You guys will see. So... Of course, there's a bunch of like young kids there. They're all sitting down. They're all looking scared, nervous. And me, I was in the, in the Army for eight and a half years. I'm not scared of anything that the Army can do. I know the game. Uh, I can play the game just as well as anybody. And so walk in and they take your blood pressure first because reasonably they want to make sure that you're not going to fall and faint. And... Uh, The recommendation was, hey, don't drink any coffee. So me, being kind of an idiot, I was like, meh, don't tell me what to do. So of course I had my morning coffee before I went in, and my blood pressure was too high to run the test. Uh, And that kind of shocked me, and I was like, okay. So I even sat, you know, he's like, okay, lay down on this mat here and try to calm down, like breathe. And I know how to reduce my heart rate, So I did some breathing exercises, got up, did the test again, and it was even higher. And I was like, well, okay, maybe I have actually got high blood pressure and I just need to come to terms with it. So I walked out and I wasn't discouraged. I was just a little bit like more determined to figure out what was going on and make it right. So I did go to the doctor, confirmed that my blood pressure is not high, but it's sort of borderline. And I was like, well, okay. And he's like, well, I want you to go run this other test here. I've already given blood and done an EKG. Let's let's uh, use more time up and consume more medical resources. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. It's, I'm almost 40. It's probably a good idea to just get a status of where I'm at. But uh, it's annoying when something takes longer than you expect it to. But uh, in the end, I think that this is going to be good for me. Uh, It is really motivating me to stay fit. So I just got out of the gym. I'm in a hotel, and the fitness center is not amazing, but it's good enough. And you know what? It's got free weights. It's got treadmills. So I had a heck of a good workout, and I'm just going to push forward. I'm just going to work as hard as I physically can, and then I'm going to work harder. So now getting down to the meat of what I wanted to share with you guys. This might be a shortish episode, but I just had to make something of this, and I think that you will find it useful. So what it is, is an acronym, and I'm going to try and, uh, I'm I'm recording this on my iPhone, so I'm going to try to get access to this without uh, pausing the recording, so uh, if somehow the recording jumps a bit, it's because I was unsuccessful. So let's see if I can do that. Oh yeah, okay, here we go. So the acronym is SMART, and it stands for, okay, so when, you're, when you have an objective that you want to, to achieve, you got to look and you got to use the acronym SMART to determine whether this objective is worth doing. So, so let's say you're like, I want to be able to quit my job, okay? So that's an, that's an objective, but... Uh, It's not a good enough objective. You can't just set a goal and say, I want to quit my job. And the reason is that that is not a specific enough objective. And S being the first letter of the word SMART, the first word of the acronym is specific. So when you set a goal, it has to be specific. You have to be like, I want to quit my job within this period of time. Okay, But even that's not specific enough because... The letter M in the word smart, unless you're Homer Simpson and you're spelling it S-M-R-T. Oh, maybe some of you won't get that joke. Anyway, I don't care. Go watch The Simpsons. It's a good show. So M stands for measurable. So a measurable goal has to be something that you can actually track. Now, um, getting back to, let's, 
let's think here. So specific, it has to be simple, clear. So the couple of things that you need to know is why is this goal important to me? And in asking the question why, you might discover that the objective that you initially thought was important is not as important as you initially believed it was. So for me, the whole objective of quitting my job, it seemed really important to me at the time that I started thinking about it. But now that I am older and I'm more patient, I realize that that is not an objective that's that important to me. What was important to me was to have a job that was not too stressful to me and was not act, actually degrading my health. So I have achieved that. I have a job that I, I enjoy and it doesn't pay a ton. It pays less than the last job I had. But the stress level is far more manageable. There is no more uh, literally sleepless nights where I go to work having not slept at all, which sucks so much. Um, there was days where I would, I would have gone for a week without food just for a half an hour nap. And I'm like, just, you know, sitting at work and you're, it's, it's cold, you know, like minus 30, I'm exhausted <laughs> and I'm at work. And all I can think is just kill me. I hate this. So none of that is a problem anymore. I have a job that is good. So quitting my job turns out wasn't a very important objective. What is important to me, and this is something that I'm actually working to formulate is, is a clear direction for my business. You know, making measurable goals, specific measurable goals that are a achievable. Okay. So one of the things that happened when I first started doing business, I first started doing e-commerce. And if you didn't get it, the A in smart is the word achievable. So I was, uh, I had a goal of quitting my job and I, I looked at the timeline. This is 2017, right? So it's been a couple of years since that. I looked at my timeline and I'm like, well, I'd like to quit by the end of the year. You know, I want to, I want to leave this job at the end of the year. So um, the problem is, is that's not an achievable goal for me. And it wasn't even close to being realistic. And uh, <laughs> what I needed to do was look at the metrics of what I'm doing now and say, can this actually happen? So if you're saying to yourself, and, and I've actually heard this quite a bit, and don't, don't think for a second that I'm raining on your parade. I'm just splashing you with a cold dose of reality. Uh, a lot of people, they get into e-commerce because they believe that it's easy to do and that there's fast profits. And usually they get into it like that because some guru promised them that. And I can tell you guys, I promise you, I, I make one promise to you that I will never lie to you about how easy or how achievable any of this is. In fact, if anything, I'm going to try and throw all of the negatives at you right in your face because you need to know how challenging this can be because that will make you more determined. You will be more focused. You will be more alert. You're not just going to try and coast through this business thing. This is competitive. E-commerce is competitive. There are a lot of people out there who are doing well at e-commerce and there's a lot of people out there who are I say struggling, but it's just that they haven't found a lot of traction yet. I mean, they're still making money, but they, they feel like they're struggling because they're not making the kind of money they expect it to and in the time frame that they expect it to make it. And they, they, they plateau at a certain level and they can't seem to grow beyond that. And there's a lot of reasons why they can't grow beyond that. And those are the things that I'm here to attack on this podcast. I'm here to say... This is a thing that's going to stunt your growth in e-commerce. Don't do it. And print-on-demand is just a thing in e-commerce, right? It's one aspect of e-commerce. It's what I'm doing right now. But this acronym, the SMART acronym, this can apply to anything you do. And in fact, when I learned it, it was in a completely different context. So this, we weren't even talking about business. We were actually talking about how to direct a summer camp for kids. And, you know, when you create, you know, a theme for a camp, you know, 
and this this smart acronym was was one of the things that they taught us in addition to a whole bunch of other things that they taught us and I thought this is way applicable to everything that I'm doing it's just an excellent thing to learn and I got to share it so a is achievable um so a couple of questions that you need to ask is do I have the skills to actually achieve this so here's a here's a salient uh objective so let's say that you're like okay well i need to to create a bunch of listings and i always tell people if you have no idea what to do next create more listings create more design ideas research create research create then list them everywhere you can okay that is very simple to do and it's also very achievable okay so the problem is that people say well you know i i have a goal of having you know 100 sales a day within three months. And, and you might laugh and say, well, that's stupid. But I have the same, I have a goal like that. Um, by the end of the year, um, I want to have my Christmas be $100,000 in sales just over Christmas. So that 30 days um, between, let's call it uh, November the 15th to December, yeah, it's a little bit more than 30 days. Uh, December the 20th, I want to have $100,000 in sales. And uh, that might sound like it's a huge goal. But for me, that's very achievable. And and I think I'm going to surpass that, in fact. And, and in fact, I do intend to surpass that. Uh, it'd be nice to have a million dollar year, but I don't think that's an achievable goal for me yet. I told my wife, I was like, I want my million dollar year. And I'm like, wait, okay, let's try for a half a million dollar year. Okay, so... So I, I'm shooting for a half a million dollar year. Now it is achievable, but it's a very high level of achievement that I've got to work hard to do. Okay, so um, when you're when you're looking at whether something is achievable, you got to measure it against your your skills, your time, and how how much you can actually put into this. And if you can't put the time to achieve it, you may need to outsource. And this is something I talked about this probably in the last like five or six episodes, but there is a guy who is doing the same thing I am and he outsources all of his design work. And in fact, I just talked to another guy the other day and he was looking for some, just some really simple coaching about, about Amazon. And he shared with me what he was doing. So this is what he's doing. I'll just share it with you guys because it's a really solid idea. He hired a a VA who is a graphic designer and uh, his graphic designer creates designs for him. I think it's a certain number per week and he pays him $75 a week and that this guy just delivers designs. And I don't know if he's giving him ideas or if he's, if this person has to come up with his own ideas. I might actually, I was hoping to get him on as a guest, but everybody that I ask if they want to be a guest, they're all like, oh no, I'm too shy to be on a podcast. And I'm like, what? How many people out there are that shy that they, they don't want to talk? Oh, right. It must be just that I'm kind of a, an extrovert or something. I don't know. In any case, I'm working on getting some really good guests on here, guys. And if you're sitting out there and you're like, you know what? I'm not super comfortable, but I think I could give it a go being a guest. I don't know what I would say. Don't worry about what you're going to say. I have questions. I will provoke answers from you like you wouldn't believe. All right? So if you want to be a guest on this show and you have a couple of sales under your belt, I've got questions for you. People want to hear success stories. And I will bring out the best in you. I'll make you shine. So and get back to getting back to achievable. So if you need to outsource, then do it. And I'm going to have a podcast about outsourcing. Definitely, I'm going to have an episode about outsourcing. And I'm going to be actually outsourcing something live on the podcast just because I have some things I need to outsource. And no better way to do it than to promise that I'm going to make it happen and follow through live for you guys. Okay, so S-M-A-R, the R in SMART, is relevant. Okay, so the goal that you set has to align with the overall direction of your business. So um, 
it's difficult to to see how this would be relevant to print on demand but um i guess it would be relevant into the type of business that you're looking to get into so you may not already know this and hopefully you already know this but there are hundreds of different e-commerce businesses that that you can do and uh even within print on demand there's probably eight or nine different like really distinctive ways to sell e-commerce and to make you know good money and each one of them is a distinctive and unique method that is not necessarily related to another now i like to combine all of these things to one thing because if i'm going to create content i want to post it in eight different places it just saves me time and effort right but um, when you're setting a goal it has to be relevant so it's not really it's not wise for you to you know, let's say that you're you're starting an e-commerce business and you're like, well, I need to build a website. You don't actually need to build a website because that's not relevant to what you're doing right now. Um, believe it or not, uh, print-on-demand websites are not necessary. You do not need to have your own website. I do. I have my own website, Evercardia. And if you're ever looking to see what I'm selling... Uh, Here's a secret. You can just go and visit Evercardia and you'll see some of the things that I'm selling. Uh, they're not all my winners, but uh, that's what I'm selling. So, but just, you know, don't copy what I'm doing exactly because I will find you and I will break your fingers. Um, and I mean that in the sweetest way possible. But yeah, don't, don't think that by copying my designs that you're going to win because there's a whole bunch of other things that I'm doing as well. And like I said, I will find you and I will... <laughs> I'll have to hurt you just a little bit. So, yes, please, thank you. Anyway, so, relevant, covered relevant. So, the last thing that you need when you are creating a goal, a specific, a measurable, achievable goal that is relevant to what you are doing right this second is that it has, excuse me, choking on my own saliva here, has to be time-bound. So it has to be a very specific thing like, in four months, I will upload 400 listings, right? And part of that time-bound thing is that you have to be able to break it down into smaller steps. So it has to be something specific that you're going to do, such as what I just said. I'm going to list 400 designs on Etsy in the next four months. So that's a measurable goal because you can measure 400, right? We can all count to 400. Hopefully, if you can't count to 400, well, um, Sesame Street will help you with that. Um, so achievable, that's achievable. All you got to do is break that down into 400 divided by four. That's 100 listings a month, right? So that's 100 divided by three is 33. So that's three listings per day. If you're doing 30 days in a month, um, but I, I wouldn't do that. I would try to measure it by a week so let's say um, 25 a week and that's still achievable it's a lot but it's definitely achievable and uh, if you're looking at setting a goal that's actually a pretty good goal to set Uh, Etsy listings are a little bit more fiddly they take more time so 25 a week I feel like is a good number to aim for if you've got two hours a day you can easily do that and, of course, on Amazon, um, you could probably accomplish 250 a week if you really put your mind to it. Because if you're using Gearbubble integration with Amazon, all you do is click upload. Um, so that's, that's as easy as it gets. If you're not using the Gearbubble integration, it does take a little longer. But there are ways to speed that up as well. So, yeah. So it's measurable. It's achievable. It's relevant. Okay. It's relevant to your business. You want to start an e-commerce business. You want to start a print-on-demand business. And hopefully you do. If you're listening to this podcast and you're like, well, I don't know if I want to start a print-on-demand business. Well, I don't know why you listen to the podcast. So that is a relevant goal. And it's also time-bound because you've set yourself a time period in which you want to accomplish that goal. Right? And it's even easier if you're hiring somebody to do the uploading so let's say you, you go and you hire a VA and you're like, all right, 20 cents per upload. Here's a screen capture video on how to do it. 
The uploads are going to be in this Dropbox folder here. The title of the file is the title that you'll upload with the design. It's just, I'm literally walking you through how I did this, guys. So make notes if you need to. But this is an easy way to hire a VA. 20 cents per upload. Here's how to do it. I want you to upload 100 per week minimum. So that's a, that's a good measurable goal. Um, and it's easy to accomplish. And you're accountable now to create those 100 designs. Because your VA is going to be sitting there looking at this folder. And if he doesn't find 100 designs in there, he's going to email you and be like, Hey, um, do you have 100 designs for me to upload? So this is one of the ways that you can keep yourself accountable. And there's actually more um, letters on top of the SMART. And there's actually SMART-er. So at the end of the SMART, you need to do E. You need to evaluate at the end of that time period and say, did I accomplish this goal? And then review. You need Okay, so was this a realistic goal? Do I need to reassess the way I look at this goal? And if you do, then sit down and do that. So I'm working right now to come up with a downloadable PDF for you to sit down and measure how you're doing in your business. And it's going to be part of my getting started guide. And uh, I'm still working on that, guys. I know I keep saying that. But uh, like I said, I am relatively busy right now. But I do have a goal to get that getting started guide finished by next weekend. That's my goal. And as you probably have guessed, it is specific. It's measurable. It's achievable. It's relevant. It's time bound because I gave myself a week to do it. By the end of next weekend, I'm going to have that ready. Then at the end of next weekend, I'm going to evaluate that goal and say, did I meet that goal? Is the is this ready? Is this product ready to be sold or given away, depending on what I decide I want to do with it. And then, you know, review and look at it and say, what can I do better? Can I make this better? Is this act, was it actually relevant to my business? Now I already know that it is. So I think my review will prove that this is useful to do. So I hope guys, oh, actually I wanted to share one more thing with you. When you're looking at a VA, um, you need to be very clear with your expectations with people. So if you're hiring somebody or you have somebody that's your partner, you need to be crystal clear with what you want them to do and how you want them to do it. Although you don't need to necessarily be very specific about how. Um, unless, you know, it's something that is a repetitive task like uploading a picture. So on the other hand, if you've got somebody that creates graphical work for you and you're like, I don't care how you do it. Just give me five good designs a week, seven good designs a week, 12 good designs. I'll pay you this much money. Uh, I think the going rate for these high-end designs that are like t-shirt designs is about six or seven dollars per design. And that is for a overseas graphic designer. If you're hiring somebody in North America, it's going to cost you more like 20 bucks. So just a thought, but uh, you need to be very crystal clear about what you expect them to do and the time frame that you expect them to do it in. And that way, you can weed out people who aren't going to perform for you and you have a, a baseline to say, okay, well, you are not meeting the expectations that I have set for you. So you are no longer going to be my VA. And as tough it is as it is, guys, to think about having to fire somebody, it is something that you might end up having to do. So hopefully that's uh, useful for you guys. It was very useful for me. And it's something that I need to spend more time on. Um, I know that maybe being a podcaster, you might think that I've got all my crap together. I have lots of my crap together. But I'm still improving my processes and, and doing better. Every week, actually. Every week, I improve something. And this is one of those things that I have improved this week. So that's it for this episode. SalesOnDemandShow.com. Leave me a comment. Leave me a message. You guys have been very quiet lately. Haven't had a lot of messages, but I have been seeing a lot of downloads. So also share this with your friends. If you have somebody that 
you think might benefit from this. And um, man, like, like repost the episode, share a link. I mean, I'm not the kind of guy that begs people to like share things because I think that something that's valuable will get shared without having to be, you know, me to beg you to share it. But you know what? Think about it. Also think about leaving a review on iTunes because that actually helps boost the rankings in iTunes. And um, when you write out your review, if you write out things like e-commerce and and put that in the text of the review, then iTunes will know what the content of the podcast is and it will start to rank for those words. So just consider it. You know, it's uh, 30 seconds of time to write a little review if this podcast has helped you. And uh, I hope it has because a lot of people have said, I love your podcast. And if you love the podcast, leave a review. So with that, guys, I wish you the greatest spring ever. It is, uh, it's kind of, it's been nasty weather here in Canada, at least in Alberta. And now it's kind of melted away. So we've got lots of time for the rest of the year. But you know what? Uh, There's no time to waste. Don't waste time, guys. Take action right now. Let's get out there and do something. Even if you don't know exactly what to do. Just create some designs and list them somewhere. Start with Etsy. So with that, I say cheers.